Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here. My name's Brian, and um, today I'm just doing sort of a collection update. It's a hodgepodge of various titles that I have acquired over the last several months, um, and it's a bunch of different labels uh, represented here. Let's start with some stuff from uh, Indicator. Now, both of these sets, uh, sorry, one is region free, one is not. So this is the region free set. This is Enter Santo, which includes the first adventures of uh, the Silver Mast Man Santo, these Mexican wrestling um, movies that I, you know, was familiar with, but didn't know a heck of a lot about. I haven't had a chance to check out this set just yet, but I did see we got the Santo release from uh, Vinegar Syndrome, and I do have that one. And so I'm kind of hoping to do sort of a Santo festival at some point and go through like three of his films. But um, this looks like a fun set from Indicator, again, region free. And uh, their website says, immediately recognizable by his distinctive silver mask, the heroic wrestler known as El Santo the Saint, was Mexico's most popular popular luchador, becoming a folk hero and the star of a hugely popular series of action films. Enter Santo, the first adventures of the silver masked man, presents the two earliest cinematic excursions of this icon of Mexican popular culture. In Santo vs. the Evil Brain, Uh, the dastardly Dr. Campos is kidnapping the brainwashing scientists when undercover detective Santo falls prey to Campos's scheme. Lieutenant Zambrano and El Incognito must come to his assistance to foil Campos's plans. Meanwhile, in the same years, Santos versus the Infernal Men, uh, the trio of El Santo, El Incognito, and Zambrano team up once again to fight a band of drug smugglers shot in Cuba in the final days before Fidel Castro entered Havana. Uh, these two films represent the celluloid birth of a true screen legend and a spawned and spawned a further 50 Santo films. Wow. I forgot just how popular he was. Um, Beautifully restored in 4K from the original, the original negatives, these thrilling films finally received their world Blu-ray premiere in this individually numbered limited edition two-disc set, complete with new and archival extras, including a feature-length documentary, a poster, and an 80-page book. Not a booklet, a book. Um, so, Santo vs. Evil Brain has a 4K restoration, da-da-da. Uh, looking for El Santo, 31-minute uh, Vivian Garcia Besney's uh, searching for filming locations in Havana, Cuba, and the true story in the making of the first two Santo films. A League of Gentlemen, a new featurette, uh, 12 minutes, previously unseen interview filmed in 2009 in which co-star Joaquin uh, Cordero reminisces about his experiences acting alongside El Santo and his friendship with producer uh, George Garcia Besney. And then Mascara versus Mascara, uh, 33 minute new featurette, the killer film El Critico uh, and Mascadero, the mask critic, discusses the early years of Mexican lucha libre, the birth of the luchador film genre, and El Santo's transition from wrestler to film star, cultural icon, and national treasure. Then Santo vs. Infernal Men, again, uh, 4K restoration from the negative. 2011, Perdida, 96 minute feature length documentary by Vivian Garcia Besney, granddaughter of George Garcia Besney, and um, Mate Calderon, exploring her family's contribution to the Mexican cinema, including initiating the Santos series. So that's a cool extra documentary, full-length, 96-minute doc to be included here. Perdita Image Gallery's rare and extensive collection of photographs and promotional materials from the Calderon family vaults. And this has this exclusive 80-page book, Again, these are not um, booklets, folks. This is a full-on matte finish, beautiful book. And and this includes 
a uh, new essay by Luciana Castillo, uh, an archival newspaper article on Mexican wrestling, Christian Simet on the history of the mask in Mexican wrestling, extracts from Carlos Monsivas's The Rituals of Chaos, and Jimmy Pantera's Los Tigres del Ring, an archival interview with Griselda Cruz, daughter of comic book writer uh, Jose G. Cruz, uh, Michael Donnelly on Perdita, an archival interview with Vivian Garcia. Uh, wow, that is a lot of stuff. And the double-sided poster is also included. So a really nice Santo set from um, the folks at Indicator. And this has reversible artwork, so you can have either Santo versus Evil Brain or the other film as your primary on the outside. But again, really nice set, and they come in these wonderful... Um, smooth you know heavy duty boxes that um that indicator puts out and i really love these boxes uh, with a little j card on it very nice stuff okay so that's the santo set and then we move on from that to the big gun down this of course is um sergio cor sorry sergio salima's film the big gun down and this one is Region B locked. This is from 1966 um, and includes multiple cuts of the film, which is fascinating, and a whole lot of extras. Um, now, this has come out from, uh, I want to say, Grindhouse, and I haven't done a side-by-side, -side, but boy, there's a lot of stuff here, and I'd be curious if, well, there's definitely some new stuff listed here that uh, is going to be exclusive to this release as opposed to the... Uh, Grindhouse release, which I do remember enjoying. But um, this film, of course, stars Lee Van Cleef and uh, it says it was released the same year as Leone's The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly and Corbucci's Django. Uh, the Big Gun Down is a classic spaghetti western directed by the great Sergio Salima. This brutal film elevated western regular Lee Van Cleef to his first ever starring role. So this is a big deal for Lee Van Cleef and his fans. When bounty hunter Jonathan Corbett, that's Van Cleef, is hired to track down a Mexican peasant, Thomas Millian, in a career-defining role, uh, I forgot he was in this, um, who has been accused of an appalling crime. He is initially outwitted by the Wily Bandit. However, the relationship between the two men soon takes an unexpected turn, and they team up to take on a railroad baron, uh, Brockton, Walter Barnes. With its rousing score by legendary composer Ennio Morricone and its politically charged screenplay by Sergio Donati, who also did uh, Once Upon a Time in the West, and Franco Salinas' The Battle of Algiers. Um, th so interesting combo of screenwriters there. The Big Gun Down has earned its reputation as one of the greatest and most influential Italian westerns. This individually numbered limited edition includes three versions of the film, the U.S. theatrical cut, the extended U.S. cut, and the original 100-minute 110 minute Italian version uh, along with a fascinating selection of new and archival extra features a poster and an 80 page book 2k restorations of the, the versions of the film um, and this includes a couple blu-rays so you have the three presentations you have the 111 minute original Italian theatrical version presented with both Italian and English soundtracks the extended US cut 95 minutes uh with scenes added for television broadcast and the original U.S. theatrical version, 89 minutes. Um, audio commentary with writers and film experts Barry Forshaw and Kim Newman on the Italian theatrical version. Audio commentary with film historians C. Courtney Joyner and Henry Park on the extended U.S. cut. Uh, Spaghetti Western Memories, 2012, 52-minute documentary featuring director... Uh, Sergio Salima and actor Thomas Millian revisiting their much heralded Western. Thomas Millian acting on Instinct 2013, 30 minutes. Some of these have to be from, I would think, from the um, uh, Grindhouse release, but the new ones I'll point out. So the Thomas Millian 2013, 30 minute, uh, the genre star recalls acting in The Big Gun Down and reveals some of his acting secrets. Uh, Prelude to a Gun Down, 2023. This is new. Ten minutes. Author and musician Stephen Thrower discusses the career of Salima and the film's cast and crew. A very nice new edition with Stephen Thrower. A big fan of his. Heroes and Villains, 2023. This is also new. 30 minutes. Stephen Thrower untangles the themes and politics of the big gun down. So you have multiple 
featurettes with Stephen Thrower, author of uh, some great books on the genre. Uh, Settling of Accounts, 2023. This is new, 23 Minutes. Austin Fisher, author of Radical Frontiers in the Spaghetti Western, Politics, Violence, and Popular Italian Cinema, uh, situates the film within the wider context of the genre. And then, um, let's see, limited edition, 80-page book with new essay by Italian ex- cinema expert Robert Curti, uh, archival interviews with Lee Van Cleef, Thomas Millian, and Sergio Salima, extracts from the film's promotional materials, a reprint of Ignacio Ramone's 1980 article for Cineast Magazine, uh, Italian Westerns as Political Parables, and an examination of the work of co-screenwriter Franco Salinas, an overview of critical responses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so yeah, this is a really nice set. Again, comes in the wonderful indicator box. You've got your beautiful book. It's just lovely stuff. I love their books. They're really well put together. It comes with a poster also. Um, I think it's double-sided, but you get a sense of that. And then the release itself is a double disc set where you have um, the Blu-ray uh, and, and the multiple features split over it looks like so you have the Italian theatrical version extended US cut and extras on one and then the US theatrical version on the second disc um, so that's nice they split it over multiple discs always good for collectors who worry about bit rates which I totally understand but very much looking forward to checking out multiple versions of this film which is one that, uh, even though I bought the Grindhouse releasing disc, I don't know if I ever got a chance to watch it. So that's how ridiculous I am. But uh, definitely excited about this Indicator Big Gun Down set. That's Region B locked. Let's see, what do we have here? Um, next up, we have Midnight Run 4K. I just snagged this uh, just a little while ago. One of my favorite films of all time, one of the great buddy movies of all time, and um, I've seen a review of the 4K. It looks like it's a pretty good version, although I heard some complaints about the audio mix, which goes back to the original mix for the Blu-ray, um, but I haven't checked it out yet. Regardless, I love this movie. I think Grodin and De Niro are so good together and so funny, and you know the supporting cast you know, Joey Pants, Dennis Farina. I mean, it goes on and on. Uh, Alonzo Mosley, FBI, played by the great Yafet Kodo. Really, truly one of my favorite films. And one that in realizing this blue, this 4K was coming out, I was getting ready to sell my Blu-ray and I uh, got a chance to sit with my parents and rewatch it. And this was an old family favorite <laughs> as, um, as much as the language is definitely... Very R-rated, uh, a lot of swearing in this movie. Uh, it was a family sort of gem for us, one that we would watch over and over again. And I had sort of forgotten it. I'd forgotten how good it is, the idea that, um, you know, De Niro plays a down-on-his-luck bounty hunter who gets a big break in that uh, a witness for um, a mobster trial that could really take him t- down this big mobster that... De Niro ultimately has ties to and that he wants to see go down for reasons that come out in the movie. Um, He gets a chance to go after this guy and this guy is played by Charles Grodin. He's sort of an accountant for the mob and has um, some evidence that will, you know, put these guys away. Uh, But it really becomes this initially starting with a grumpy relationship to a true friendship by the end, and I, I find myself very moved by it. And I also love um, even the score. Uh, Danny Elfman does the music, and it's guitars and horns and, you know, guitars and brass, and it's different than you're used to from Elfman. Like, if you heard it, you wouldn't necessarily go, oh, yeah, that's Danny Elfman, because you're used to a certain kind of music from him. But I do think it's some of my favorite music he ever created, and it really accentuates the film in certain spots when this theme music comes in, It's just rousing and emotional and fun, and I just love it. I mean, there's just nearly a perfect movie as far as I'm concerned in terms of the way things come together. Um, 
Martin Brest, who had done Beverly Hills Cop, and did a great movie called um, uh, Going in Style uh, with George Burns and some other older actors, Lee Strasberg and Art Carney. Um, that one still doesn't have a Blu-ray, but I love uh, Martin Brest's work, and, and this is maybe his masterpiece. I mean, Beverly Hills Cop's pretty great, but I might prefer this. Um, so I don't think there's any new features. This is a new 2022 4K scan of the original camera negative, but you do have interviews with Jack, I'm sorry, <laughs> Robert De Niro, Groden, uh, Joe Pantoliano, John Ashton, who's great in this movie from Beverly Hills Cop, Yafet Kodo, and uh, writer George Gallo, as well as a vintage making featurette, making a featurette. So a really great disc. I had to get the 4K, you know, come on. Midnight Run is fantastic. So that is the next one. Then uh, I haven't had a chance to even open this up yet, but here's a 4K for The Maltese Falcon, one of the uh, great debut films of all time, John Huston's, I believe, debut feature based on the novel by Dashiell Hammett. A um, whole lot of great stuff happening here. Uh, incredible performance uh, by Bogart as Sam Spade, and you also have, of course, Mary Astor, Peter Lorre, and Sidney Greenstreet in one of their you know, easily career defining roles as a group of folks that are after this Maltese Falcon, this jewel encrusted Falcon that um, is causing a lot of issues in San Francisco at this time. Um, but one of the great studio films of the 1940s and one of the great, I, you know, it's lumped in with film noir. Uh, it's more of a detective movie. I think of it as than pure film noir, but I guess it is noir in that sense as well. Um, but, you know, truly fantastic. Just a movie that you watch it and you see how everything plays out and it's complicated and it really holds up. And so I can't wait to check this out. Although I've heard, I can't remember if I've heard some mixed stuff about the actual transfer, but I know that Warner Brothers usually does a pretty good job with their um, catalog titles. So uh, I'm very curious to check it out. But includes a uh, commentary by Bogart biographer Eric Lax. Um, Maltese Falcon, One Magnificent Bird, uh, Breakdown, 1941 Studio Blooper Reel, Makeup Tests, uh, and some other features here. Um, it doesn't include, I don't think it includes the, um, other movies that used to be on the, uh, the DVD set. There's a couple other versions of the Maltese Falcon that were on that, and I don't think those are included here. But regardless, I mean, this is a true gem and one that every every time I come back to it, I appreciate it more and more. I used to be just a gigantic Bogart fan, and I still am, and this is definitely one of the reasons for that. Between this and The Big Sleep, at the time in college when I really got into Bogart, those two were two, and to have and have not, and I mean, there's a lot of great Bogart to talk about, but um, very excited to check out this 4K of the Maltese Falcon, and then we have, um, I've got some, what have I got here, I've got some uh, website exclusives from Shout Factory, these, the only thing I'll say is that I wish they could get the prices a little more under control, but I understand that they're limited usually to 1,500 or 2,000 copies. And so you just end up having to pay a little bit more. Um, I don't love that they charge you an extra buck for insurance and shipping. I don't know. It's it's just kind of expensive. So I, I, I don't blame people for not picking these up, but there's some fun stuff here. And so I got to make you guys aware of it. Uh, this first one is a nice double feature set. Uh, that includes the great Texas Dynamite Chase uh, and Eat My Dust, a great breakout for Ron Howard uh, as an actor for um, Roger Corman. Uh, great Texas Dynamite Chase is from 1976. In the Great Te Texas Dynamite Chase, uh, Cla Candy, Claudia Jennings, and Ellie Joe, Jocelyn Jones, are a pair of bandits who blast their way into banks with a carload of pure TNT. When they take uh, Slim, Johnny Crawford hostage, they ignite a fun-fueled uh, crime spree across the great state of Texas. So they are bank robbers that use dynamite, and that's pretty fun. And it is a fun, whilst, you know, somewhat emotional in parts, adventure. You know, it may or may not go perfectly well for them 
the movie will show you in due time. But this is a cult item. It's a movie that I discovered first as a cult film as part of a canon of cult uh, movies. And so it's nice to see that getting a Blu-ray and it looks good. And then Eat My Dust, uh, also from 76. Ron Howard pops the clutch and tells Smokey to eat my dust. Uh, Hoover, Ron Howard, is seriously into Darlene, and Darlene is seriously into, seriously into fast cars. So Hoover steals a red-hot race car for them for the ultimate joy ride, a screaming, squealing, shattering smath- smash-a-thon. And this actually includes an interview with actor Ron Howard, How to Crash on a Dime, The Making of Eat My Dust, Leonard Maltin's interview with Roger Corman going way back, I think almost to the VHS of, in fact, I think it was for the VHS of Eat My Dust as part of the Corman Classics line. Um, and um, interview with Corman poster artist John Solly as well. So nice features on Eat My Dust. And that movie set off a bunch of good old boy car chase movies, including Ron Howard's, I think, directorial debut with Grand Theft Auto, which is very much trying to capitalize on the popularity of the car chase, car crash, you know, southern fried kind of thing that's happening in Eat My Dust, although that one I think takes place in California, but it's definitely a car crash movie and one they would go on to make more of um, in the 70s. Cannonball is another one they made, I think, the same year. Paul Bartel directed that. Death Race 2000 is kind of a car crash thing, but anyway, Eat My Dust is one that's lesser talked about but a lot of fun. Uh, with Ron Howard. Uh, so that's Eat My Dust and Great Texas Dynamite Chase. Then we have uh, Demon of Paradise. This is directed by the great Sirio H. Santiago. and includes a new 2K scan of the original camera negative. And this one's kind of like a Creature from the Black Lagoon-y kind of knockoff. Little Jaws looking in terms of the cover. Uh, and I hadn't seen it. It was originally part of a double DVD with um, Up From the Depths, which also came out on Blu-ray as an exclusive from Shout. I think that's gone out of print. Um, this is a, officially a Scream Factory release. Uh, the hunters become the prey when illegal dynamite fishing, dynamite connection here, uh, prematurely ends the hibernation of a mythological carnivorous lizard man in Demon of Paradise, the owners of a local resort who... Uh, whose patrons have been becoming appetizers on this predator's menu. And herpetologists join forces with the sheriff to save the remaining tourist from succumbing to the feasting of the beast. Catherine Witt uh, stars in this engrossing creature feature directed by cult movie master Sirio H. Santiago. Um, so no features really, but um, it's fun. It's a little bit of a slow starter. There's some... Uh, monster attack stuff at the beginning and then it quiets down and then I think this is one of my big problems with Serio H. Santiago movies is they tend to be they have that inciting incident and then there's a lot of dead talking time and not enough action this one does a decent job of peppering the action with the monster throughout and the monster suit is pretty well done and enjoyable if a little goofy but you know as a Jaws slash Black La- Creature from the Black Lagoon fan and, you know, a fan of aquatic horror in general. Demon of Paradise was something I had to snag. So that is that one. And then this is one that I've never seen, but I've always heard about, R. Xmas. Um, now, this is a shout uh, release, not a scream. And this one is a movie from uh, Mr. Abel Ferrara. And it says, It's Christmas time in Manhattan, and one loving couple is leading a dual life doting socialite parents uh, by day and hard-hitting heroin dealers by night. Their dangerous life soon catches up with them when double-crossing dealers attempt to muscle in the couple's reign over the local supply. When the husband, uh, Lilo Lilo Broncado from The Sopranos, is kidnapped, things spit out of control, and his wife, Adrea DiMatteo from Sons of Anarchy, um, is confronted with a heart-stopping ultimatum, pay a hefty ransom, do in 20 minutes or face the unthinkable loss of her beloved. As you can see, Ice T also stars in this film. And this one, not really streaming as far as I know, um, has gotten a DVD release, but is a movie that remains, I think, lesser discussed because of availability. So 
Um, this comes with a commentary from Abel Ferrara, so I was psyched to check that out. And um, yeah, so this is just another exclusive that I was like, okay, Abel Ferrara, I need something to fill my cart so I can get free shipping because it's already really expensive. And uh, I guess this will do, you know, that's how I thought about it. Um, just a couple more things here. Uh, Baxter, this one came out originally from um, Scorpion releasing via Kino. This was just discussed recently on the Video Archives podcast and um, definitely got me excited to check it out. I knew my podcast partner, Elric Kane, was already a fan of this and had alerted me to its existence. Story of a dog who, it's a French dog. Well, I'll read it. Um, He'll love you to death. Baxter, a sociopathic bull terrier, stars in this chilling French horror film that blends thrills and black comedy into a truly original tale. The inner thoughts of the brooding Baxter reveal that he is quite unhappy with his situation, living with an elderly woman, um, French screen legend Lise Delamare, Del star of the Jean Renoir classic La Marseillaise, um, who is afraid of him. In search of his ideal master, he, his, he successfully plots to do away with her and attempts a similar plan when he becomes dissatisfied with the next owner. It's not long before the ingenious Baxter finds the perfect guardian, a lonely, introverted boy whose macabre interest in Hitler's personal life helps turn the all-too-willing cocaine, uh, sorry, <laughs> canine into a thoroughbred killing machine. Um, sounds fascinating to me. I don't really even know what to make of that plot synopsis. Uh, includes an audio commentary by filmmaker Mark Savage. Um, and, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very curious to check this out. Animal Attack, but also a dark, weird comedy. Um, you know, sounds like Cat's Eye meets, uh, Man Bites Dog or something. I mean, I'm just totally spitballing here. I don't really know. Um, but anyway, so that is that. And then lastly... Um, let's throw in Dr. Giggles. This is the new Scream Factory release of Dr. Giggles, which was, if I recall, an incredibly popular release at the video store I worked at in college when this came out in like 90, um, 92. Yeah. I remember we couldn't keep this on the shelf. People were really wanting to see Dr. Giggles. And it's definitely developed a cult following over the years. This is its second release on Blu-ray. Um, and it doesn't look like this is a new scan, I don't think. It was released as a double uh, from Warner Brothers with another film. But um, no need for an appointment. Forget about your copay. Healthcare won't save you from Dr. Giggles. Larry Drake, uh, Dark Man, and of course L.A. Law plays the night-prowling surgical psychopath who wreaks havoc on the residents of a once peaceful town from an old haunted house to a midway fun house from unwanted house calls to the operating table. The doctor is insane. Uh, and this includes some new features here. Laughter is the best, best medicine making of Dr. Giggles featuring new interviews with director uh, Manny Cotto and never before seen archival interview with actor Larry Drake Melodies of Madness, the film scores of Brian May, featuring new interview with film music historian Randall D. Larson, vintage featurette, trailer, VHS teaser, TV spots, etc. So that is Dr. Giggles. So I think that's going to do it for this round of collection updates. I've got a lot more stuff, but I'll sort of parse that out over the next um, month or so uh, with more of these updates as I can get to them. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.